Mr. Brown, please. Are you my timer? Yes, sir. Okay, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Uh, I hope I stay away. No, I'm probably fine. Have you done the day before? Oh, um, yeah. It's kind of entertaining in a way. Unless you're judging. Yeah. Well, the judging part is hard. We don't need timer because the timer is so sound for you. So, you know, I think you're right. So, I have a coin. Um, all right, and we and we do the coin toss twice, right? I think once, because like usually they, it's fine with them. Like they usually just say who goes first, who doesn't. But they said pro and con. So it says here, it says the team winning the coin toss will choose the side mm -hmm. or speaking order. The other team will then choose what remains to do the side of the team. Okay, so maybe it's just once. Yeah. Four, four, three minutes of crossfire, and each team has two minutes of prep time. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be keeping track of that. So you can as well as I'll do it. Yes, right through here. I'll work with you. Yeah. Just who we needed. Oh, 
Oh, please do. Thank you very much. And um, let me just shut my phone down for just a second. That would be the most embarrassing thing. <laughs> Greetings, Honorable Judge. Today we will be debating the resolution on balance non governmental organizations are more effective than governments at improving the lives of disadvantaged people. We will start by defining the terms. On balance is defined as, after considering all the relevant facts and opinions, NGOs is defined as a non governmental organization. A group of voluntary, voluntary, sorry, a voluntary group of individuals or organizations not affiliated any contest. Form to provide services or to advocate a public policy. Effective is defined as successful in producing a desired or intended outcome. Government is defined as a group of people who officially control and have authority over a city, state, or country. Improving the life is defined as stabilizing and ameliorating the financial and social statuses of communities. And lastly, disadvantaged people is defined as. Lacking in the basic resource or conditions such as standard housing, medical and educational facilities, etc., believed to be necessary for an equal position in society. The, the probe would like to first to present its argument, stating that NGOs are more effective in maintaining the safety of the people by the clearance of war debris and underdeveloped nations than the government. And we will prove that this that our example, in this example, NGOs are more effective. A POPO, a Belgian organization that had, um, created for the sole purpose of disaster relief. They specialize in training a specific set species of rats to clear landmines and detect tuberculosis in areas such as Cambodia, Zimbabwe, Angola, where due to past conflicts, a series of landmines were placed. These landmines weren't put to use and are still active all around the world. The governments of these aforementioned countries haven't taken the initiative to clear out these landmines. As according to a November 2018 UNICEF report, in Cambodia, Zimbabwe, and Angola, children account for up to 50% of landmine casualties, and globally, an estimated of 15,000 to 20,000 people are killed or maimed by landmines every year. In Cambodia, during the Pol Pot regime, the Khmer Rouge placed accordingly 11 million landmines in Cambodia from 1979 to 1998. A strict example of this NGO's success, according to Sen Wei the deputy editor of Channel News Asia, in an article published in 2019, stated, Cambodia's landmine clearance success is accredited to, uh, is accredited to a purpose clearance of 1 million square meters of land, destroying effectively 285 mines and other deadly devices, and improving the lives of more than 12,000 people in 2018. The clearance of 285 landmines directly helps the financial statuses of disadvantaged people. As at Sanwei Day stated, the presence of these explosive devices has prevented Cambodians from accessing scarce land for agriculture, further impoverishing rural communities. With 21.4% of Cambodia's population residing in the urban areas, according to a 2013 Cambodia, Cambodian Intercensal Population Survey, it is the remaining 78.6% of the population that resides in these rural areas, where the villages are most affected. However, the clearance of landmine also prevents future casualties within these communities of disadvantaged people. And this proves the claim that NGOs are more effective in maintaining the safety of the people um, by the clearance of war debris, uh, war debris and other developed nations. And we see that at the inefficient, we see inefficiency in the Cambodian government to help these rural areas out and to clear these landmines. And that a non-governmental organization had to intervene and step in and effectively improve the lives of people who could not use land, who were impoverished because of the lack of scarce uh, lack of land available for agricultural uses usage especially and especially they prevented several casualties that could have taken place. Therefore we believe that non-governmental organizations are more effective than governments in improving lives of large people and my partner will bring up one example. Thank you. My partner and I must negate the resolution that NGOs are more effective than governmental organizations at moving the lives of disadvantaged people. This is due to their weak planning and management capacity, their interdependence on governments, and their lower productivity in the healthcare sector. Our first contention as to why non governmental organizations are not more effective than governments at moving the lives of disadvantaged people 
Does that mean a wheat planting? Oh, wait, sorry. One example of this study was conducted by the steering committee for the evaluation of the Netherlands co financing program. It stated that an increase in governmental intervention in the Dutch co finance NGO projects raised concern among other NGOs that they were worried about losing funding if they were not able to demonstrate immediate, immediate project related poverty. This then led to a bigger concern for their own NGO survival rather than the disadvantaged population. As opposed to this, the Pan American Health Organization relate that in 18, 1986 countries adopted a regional policy to improve coordination of international humanitarian health assistance. All Latin American and Caribbean nations have health disaster coordinators within their ministries of health who do not only coordinate relief efforts in the event of a disaster, but continuously update emergency plans and conduct preparedness training for health and medical personnel. In addition to this, a more recent movement in 2018 was taken by the Australian government, who, according to the Australian government initiative, established the natural disaster relief and recovery arrangements to alleviate the financial burden on the states and to facilitate the early supplies of assistance to the disaster affected communities. These examples are showing the level of organizations and systems that governments are implementing in order to have more efficient outcomes in disaster relief that has dated back all the way to 1880s and 1986. My second contention is that NGOs rely on governments in order to maximize effectiveness. Therefore, governments serve as a fundamental and essential to them. Which brings me to the example where, according to Henrik Markinson in the Review of African Political Economy, on average, of a third of NGO funds from a third of NGO funds um, stem from governmental sources. However, there is insufficient evidence to tell us how this NGO aid is spent, or how effective it is in the long run. Another primary example of this would be the use of military assets. According to the Guide to Non-Governmental Organizations for the Military, in 1990, worldwide NGOs and the world militaries worked with one another in countries like Somalia, Bosnia, Northern Iraq, and Albania, after the Indian Ocean tsunami. This, uh, this proves that without the use of military assets, they would not be able to provide disaster relief in these areas to begin with. According to funds for NGOs, the United States Agency for International Development is a major contributor of international development aid. Its financial assistance to NGOs in developing countries runs into millions of dollars every year. The large donation is another instance of NGOs' interdependence on governmental, governmental resources. Lastly, the actions of these NGOs are not nearly as productive as the governments in the healthcare sector. NGOs are reliant on donations, therefore it can be considered long-term. However, with a consistent opportunity for the flow of money, gov governments can. This can be demonstrated in the healthcare sector. Governments provide their countries with the long-term solutions as a part of their mandate. Due to this weak planning and management capacity, their interdependence on government, and low productivity in the healthcare sector, we must negate the resolution uh, that NGOs are more effective than governmental organizations that are improving the lives of this Oh, oh yeah, okay, yeah, sure. Yes. Does it only take thirty seconds? No, it's just nice cross. Um On what percentage of Netherlands is this advantage? Um, what, uh, why is that relevant to the situation in the Netherlands, the Netherlands um, increase in governmental intervention? Or, 
but I, I mean, my part of the world is Um, do you have any other support other than the, the landmines to represent our resolution that states on balance? I mentioned in my speech on that I will bring up more examples. I will recite them for you to find an example, and we will provide more examples in our conversations. Um, can you um, specify Henrik Martinson's credentials? I, I'll, I'll, I'll do the source of where I got the information. Uh, how would you consider the people you mentioned in the first contention as disadvantaged? Um, so, as according to our definition, which is um, uh, of the strong people lacking the basic resource conditions, um, believed to be necessary for an equal position in society. Uh, we clearly stated that these people um, have a lack of, of um, people that have a lack of, lack of access to agricultural land are being impoverished, and also people are being maimed and killed throughout, and they're living in fear, and they're living in um, they're living in complete fear of um, being killed by landmines, and the, all of this entire land is inaccessible, and that is that is substantially increasing the poverty rates in Cambodia because of that. Um, now you mentioned that NGOs depend. Your one of your arguments was that NGOs depend on governments, um, on governments to um, to conduct activities. However, um, according to our arguments, can you um, clearly say how can an NGO be dependent on a failing government? When, it, when um, in our example, we stated that a whole sector when the government was failing. It can. It can. For example, when I brought up my uh, point about military assets, um, the NGOs. It is, and the aid that the government has on NGOs stem, stem from the governmental sources or the military assets in order to keep a war on its security. Um, do you have evidence outside of Cambodia? We stated that um, there is um, accordingly, uh, so the Apopo's success is in Cambodia, Zimbabwe, and in Goda. However, we took Apopo's best example, which was um, best success story, which was in Cambodia. However, we can show you the entire report um, of Zimbabwe and Angola if you would like to. Um, can you provide us with exact evidence on what impact did the Pan American 1998 regional policy has, as we simply we, as we cannot seem to see what impact have they had? Um, so, for example, there was a flood, uh, the Hurricane George, which affected the Dominican Republic in 1999. Hurricane Mitch in Central America in 1998, and this and this is where health disaster coordinators and ministers would help uh, put an effort to the uh, Um Do you have The, the comment brought up the example of the Pan American 1989 regional policy, but they failed to provide any substantial evidence of quantitative evidence wherein they've actually created an impact to disadvantaged people. Simply stating a bunch of natural disasters is not substantial enough. Then they brought up the Australian example, but they failed to matter, failed to um, recognize whether there was actually any alleviation of the economic burden and if they've actually been able to prove this with substantial evidence. They also failed to mention any of the NGO names that were able that were that were um, reliant on the Netherlands co-financing and how they have failed. And they've also failed to provide um, Henry Mark Parkinson's co um, Henry Parkinson's credentials, hence leading us to be a little confused as to whether he really has the authority to speak on this issue. Furthermore, they also mentioned that um, NGOs are dependent on the flow of money, flow of money that uh, governments provide. But our question is that LEDCs, lower economically developed countries, simply don't have this money. And since and in kind of cases like this, where most disadvantaged people live, um, NGOs have to step in where governments cannot. So now bringing this to our second example, which is on balance, NGOs are more effective in aiding healthcare situations and education. The Bangladesh Ruling Council Committee, the BRAC, is a developmental organization dedicated to alleviating poverty by empowering the poor to bring about change in their own lives. They do this by providing support services in areas of education and healthcare development. They, they believe that strictly in order, they believe strictly in, they believe that um, in order for the poor to end poverty, they require the appropriate tools to do so. 
In an article published on Thompson Warriors Foundation, written in 2014, the BRAC ran a four year program to encourage talent immunization, during which immunization growth rates rose from 70% to 4%. According to an article published by The Guardian in 2018 by Poppy McPherson, the current South, uh, South the current South Asian um, Bureau Chief at Thompson Borders reported that the Bangladeshi government has a reluctance to decentralize and invest in cities beyond Dhaka, leading to mass abject poverty in neighboring and outskirts cities. This has in turn led to underdeveloped medical facilities all around the outskirts of Bangladesh. And according to a 2017 study by the University of Southampton, most of disadvantaged people lie in the outskirts of Bangladesh. The BRAC not only tends to eradicate the epidemic of poverty in the war torn impoverished nation of Bangladesh, but also employ minority in the world. This example strictly proves the contention that NGOs are better than governments, thus affirming this resolution. The next example is partners in health, where NGOs are more effective than governments in the long term for disaster relief and upliftment of a nation post a natural disaster. Partners in Health is a Boston based NGO focused on improving healthcare worldwide. After the 2010 Haitian earthquake, reaching a magnitude of seven on the Richter scale. The death toll raised to a staggering 316,000 people, ranking as the fifth deadliest natural disaster in the history. According to an article published in 2012 by Pride.org, NGOs are implementing the majority of billion dollars in aid money that is being received to Haiti. And NGOs are being, engaging more directly with the people than the inefficient and bureaucratic government of Haiti. This proves that the Haitian government was completely ineffective in the case of the Haitian, um, in the Haitian earthquake, in which reconstructing the net nation offered disasters. But instead, the NGOs were the ones to rebuild. Linking back to Partners in Health, according to an article um, published by the Pulitzer Center in 2012, for over 20 years, Partners in Health has been working in over 1 million homes of the displaced in Haiti for relief, offering parental checkups and, treat and treatment for basic ailments for over 5,000 to 7,000 people a week. Delivering babies and treating diseases like tuberculosis, malaria, and other illnesses. This example not only proves the inefficiency of governments in a disaster relief situation, but better yet, proves the claim that NGOs are more effective at improving the lives of disadvantaged people. This is the resolution at hand, and the probe has been able to provide three solid examples as to how the government has failed and the NGOs have been able to step through. If NGOs were dependent on uh, governments, then why is it that LEDCs cannot provide substantial funding for when they are facing a disaster situation? And NGOs are the ones that are forced to step in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our opponents fail to represent more than just one location that supports their own contention in the first speech, which is who portrays this concern as a resolution takes on balance. Our opponents were explaining how NGOs are more effective in the disaster relief sector, but my partner mentioned that the Australian government established the disaster, the natural disaster relief and recovery arrangements to alleviate the financial burden on the state's end. Our opponents stated that NGOs were more effective in the healthcare sector, but as a matter of fact, according to the World Population Review, countries such as China, Pakistan, Mexico, Malaysia, and many more offer little to no cost healthcare to all of their system citizens, which would directly rebuttal that contention. As previously stated, my partner and I are here today to negate that on balance, non governmental organizations are more effective than governments at improving the lives of disadvantaged people. Our next reasons as to why this holds true is their lack of coordination amongst one another, their participation in inhumane and illegal actions, and their inflated overhead costs. Our first contention is that NGOs lack coordination amongst one another. This is apparent in emergency response efforts where there is risk of overlapping these sectors, locations and beneficiaries, and ignoring other segments of the society. Another element to this lack of coordination is the negligence of previous and current efforts exerted by similar NGOs, which leads to reinventing the wheel repeatedly. Referring to global policy, an example of this is following the Rwandan genocide, where hundreds of small organizations tried to set up operations in refugee camps in the Democratic Republic of the Congo and Tanzania. With the struggle of space, some of these camps turned into a staging post for armed factions. Throughout this chaos, an estimated 50,000 refugees died from cholera. Their lack of coordination and disorganization amongst themselves had now cost them hundreds of lives of refugees displaced from their homes. The second contention is that NGOs participate in inhumane and illegal actions. For example, according to the Guardian, a French NGO had attempted to smuggle children out of Chad without obtaining permission from either the parent or the government. If that isn't enough, according to the Washington Post, Oxfam International, one of the largest NGOs, admitted that some staff members engaged in sexual misconduct in the aftermath of the 2010 earthquake in Haiti that they had previously mentioned. 
So these mere, through these mere actions, it is evident that alleviating communities are not their biggest concern, and that they are rather clouded in judgment. Our final contention is that the money that is being donated to NGOs does not directly translate to the money spent on the bench. A big flaw in NGOs is the inflated benefits of the staff, otherwise known as overhead. These benefits include salaries, travel, per diems, and other allowances. For any business, an overhead rate of 10 to 15% is considered efficient, yet the expectation remains that NGOs should have even lower rates. However, contrary to this, organization, organizations such as Autism Spectrum Disorder Foundation has reported 90.4% total overhead, or the Wishing Fell Foundation USA, whose goal is to fulfill the wishes of terminal and ill children in the United States, with a total overhead of 91.8%. These percentages represent the amount that is taken away per dollar receiving donations toward previously mentioned benefits. With this in mind, a significantly lower percent, percentage of donation is actually being spent on improving the lives of the disadvantaged people, and rather spent on perks for the, for the workers in the NGOs. Due to their lack of coordination amongst one another, their participation in inhumane and illegal actions and their inflated overhead costs, we must negate the resolution the resolution that NGOs are more effective than governmental organizations at improving the lives of disadvantaged people. Thank you. Is it even time? No, actually, yes, can you do this? Can you do this? Oh, let me just stand. Yeah, you can stand. Okay. Um, for the Rwandan genocide, what did the government do to help the crisis that was started by the government itself? I actually don't have information on that, but I was bringing attention to the, um, the effects, the negative effects that NGOs had in that moment. Um, since we directly rebuttal the contention on healthcare sector, but you now believe that they are at least equal. Um, even if we do believe that they're equal, the burden of proof for the pro remains that we should be able to prove that NGOs are more effective than government. This can be done by NGOs in partnership with government, where NGOs are equal to the con has the um, the con has the burden to prove that this is incorrect. So um, this is in our favor. Also, um, the fifty thousand people died from cholera. What does this have to do with the NGOs, and how can we be given to the NGOs, and what does the government do to them? Well, I stated that the NGOs. The reasons that people were getting sick and that because it became a saving post and was so disorganized that it didn't end up um, having the initial intentions that the NGOs wanted. So um, I you just stated that my job is to disprove the resolution that all the NGOs are more effective and stating that they are at least equally does do that job. So would you say they are equal? Even if we do, this still performs that uh, performs our site. Um, so we sent out condolences for the children struggled and the women raped, but the word on balance in the resolution requires us to look at this from a macro scale. So how do these singular cases of mismanagement prove our resolution? There are one of many cases, those are just some examples that uh, back up one of our contentions that we provided. Um, so we also directly rebuttal the contention on the disaster uh, relief se sector, which you consider those equal, which would in fact the con side that NGOs are not more effective but possibly equally effective. As well. um, no, we do not stand under the rebellion today. We were extremely unclear with them. We believe that our argument stands on its own and that NGOs are more effective in the cases of disaster relief with people, for example. Um, in the case of the Australian disaster relief compared to the partners in health, um, do you have any substantial evidence um, provided that they actually made a difference? My partner will get you on that one. Get your information on that later. Um, can I please have your source for this? Did you mention something about um, Bangladesh in your first contention yeah. or second contention? I do please give the source. For that. So um, the the statement that was made was that Bangladesh is, has a reluctance to de decentralize and invest in cities beyond Dhaka. So this was according to a Guardian article published in 2018 by Poppy McPherson, who is a current Southeast Asia correspondent at um, Thompson Borders and has graduated from the journalism program at City University of London and has. Worked with uh, foreign policy to time, Guardian, and other newspapers. Would you like to see the source? Okay, thank you. 
Um, so for the uh, Oxfam scandal, uh, when and where, uh, when and who published the Guardian article? Uh, my partner will win up the recent papers now. So you stated that NGOs are more long term, correct? And that obviously that disaster relief sector. But don't you think that since they're reliant on donations, they're not able to be as, as long term as the opportunity governments have? Uh, Opportunity of consistent flow. So, so the example provided by um, the, uh, the court, can I ask the question? Uh, yeah. 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 Oh, so the example provided by the court was with the Haitian government, in which um, the Haitian government was extremely ineffective. In this case, I did not do anything, despite long term or short term, didn't do anything. And the NGOs were the ones that were providing long term impact. And due to this, we believe that NGOs do have, um, can carry out long term impacts much more successfully. Specific examples of NGO scandals. However, if we, but our resolution provides us to, um, to uh, ask us to look at this example on a macro level. Now, if you were to talk about NGO scandals, we can go on about government scandals and the inefficiencies of governments and the many, um, uh, many uh, scandals that the governments have committed. And taking that into account, the mind, the, um, the con um, talked about the current situation in Rwanda and how NGOs are ineffective in Rwanda. However, Honorable Judge, wasn't it the government themselves that caused these people to be displaced in Rwanda in the first place? And so how can the blame of, um, of, um, terror, of campsites being placed, being um, turned into terror camps, be, how can the blame be put on NGOs when it was the government's faultiness and the government's inefficiency that caused these people to be displaced and then a mass genocide was conducted by the government? Secondly, Honorable Judge, it seems that um, the, we asked the, we asked the call to provide us with the credentials of um, uh, Mark Erickson, if I'm not wrong, and they seeming, and they said they would bring it up later, but they did not bring it up. So that leads us to believe that they do not have the credentials of Mark Erickson, and that we do not know what his credentials are, whether he is even credible enough to write about this topic, as we as we have uh, as our arguments provide the credentials. We believe that we have three strong cases that rely on the macro aspects of um, this argument and that talk and that in our arguments provide substantial evidence of impact. Honorable Judge, the con is not providing us with impact, but they're simply providing us that what the governments have done, but not what impact has the government done. And when we ask them for evidence, they failed once again to provide us with that evidence in their, in their next speech when they said they would. And Honorable Judge, we believe that our arguments hold too because they have not reported any uh, they have not reported partner, they have not reported partners in health or BRAC, and they have let those arguments stand. Therefore, we believe that non-governmentals are in fact, uh, non-governmental organizations are in fact more effective than governmental organizations. Um, we apologize, we met Henrik Martinson. Henrik Martinson. At this point, my partner and I have negated that on balance NGOs are more effective than governments at improving the lives of disadvantaged people. Our contentions were NGOs have weak planning and management capacity, due dependence on government, lower productivity in the healthcare sector, lack of coordination amongst one another, participation in inhumane and illegal actions, and an inflated overhead cost. Our opponents stated that their contentions were NGOs are more effective in the disaster relief sector. Our opponents were explaining how NGOs are more effective in the, in the, in the, in the disaster relief sector, but in addition to what I brought up earlier, that Pan American Health Organization relays that the countries have the countries adopted a regional policy to improve coordination of international humanitarian health assistance. All Latin American and Caribbean nations have disaster have health disaster coordinators within their Ministry of Health to not only coordinate relief efforts in the event of a disaster, but continuously update emergency 
and the conduct, and conduct prepared exchange for health and medical personnel. Our opponents ask us irrelevant questions such as how many people are considered disadvantaged. However, we were providing evidence that the Netherlands were, uh, were an increase in governmental interventions in the Dutch co finance and EO projects raised concerns among other NGOs as they were worried about losing funding if they were not able to demonstrate immediate project related poverty effects. She's been to the University of um, Sydney and has a um, communications um, specialist uh, master's. And the, uh, and the source is ourbetterworld.org, and we have it as well. And she's reporting twenty three articles. Yes. 
The con is talking about the abuses of power by NGOs, but yet we still see scandals taking place in the news every single day about government scandals. Cambodia is one example wherein the Khmer Rouge took advantage of his power and destroyed his country with landmines. Haiti as well, wherein mismanagement of money has led to the inability to handle the earth to 2020 uh, earthquake, forcing NGOs such as Partners in Health to come in and intervene. The con, the con time and time doesn't again to fail. The con time and time again is failed to provide, provide any sources um, uh, regarding the uh, efficacy of any of the uh, any of the programs that they have mentioned. How is asking the amount of disadvantaged people irrelevant when the very resolution of this debate is dependent on the impacts of the disadvantaged people? They have said that governments and NGOs are equal for disaster relief, but yet have not provided any evidence for how the in the Australian disaster relief program they were equal. They've also not provided credentials for Henry Parkinson, as leading us to doubt his authority to talk about this case. We also believe that in the cases of LEDCs, wherein most disadvantaged people lie due to their economic statuses. NGOs are not dependent. NGOs are not dependent um, on the government. Rather, they are the ones that are doing the change that is needed for the disadvantaged people. Now, to sum up all our points, the BRAC is, is, is the example in which NGOs are more effective in aiding the healthcare situations and education. They have been able to fix a country of Bangladesh in which decentralization of funds has been the biggest and largest problem. The Apollo example is which in, is which where um, Cambodia, Zimbabwe, and Angola, where due to past conflicts, a series of landmines have been placed and thousands have been killed. But Apollo was enabled and effective in clearing these landmines. Partners in Health is another example in which during the Haitian earthquake, they've been able to help the people of Haiti and they've been able to help when the Haitian government has not been able to. The contention that we are trying to prove is that NGOs are more effective than governments at improving the lives of disadvantaged people. We have not only proved that these people are disadvantaged, but we have proved that they are more effective than governments in each and every case, where the con has not been able to nullify a single one of our arguments, hence all of them stand. Thank you. Thank you. My friend and I believe we have won this debate because we've clearly proven that our balance of governmental organizations are not more effective than government at improving the lives of disadvantaged people. We have supported each of our contentions with evidence. We have proved to our judge these main points about the ineffectiveness of NGOs as opposed to governments with only the lives of disadvantaged people. Contentions that were not addressed were that NGOs have weak planning management capacity, interdependence on governments, participation in inhumane and illegal actions, and an inflated overhead costs. Our opponents initially stated that they did not agree with the question that NGOs were equal in both the disaster relief and health se healthcare sector. Um, 
that, however, if this is true, that this does prove our side of the resolution that NGOs are not more but equally effective than governments. Our opponents stated that the amount of disadvantaged people is relevant. We were solely saying that in respect to the specific piece of evidence, where we prove that NGOs were simply not being effective, nor did they have the beneficiaries in mind, it was not. Um, it is hard to overlook the inhumane and illegal actions that NGOs partake in that prove to us the, unreliable, the unreliability in judgment and their concerns being elsewhere other than the beneficiary. The evidence we have provided for this was the French NGO smuggling children out of check without obtaining permission. It's also hard to dismiss the inflation of overhead in NGOs. In the examples provided, approximately 9% of every dollar was being spent on the actual beneficiaries, whereas the workers within these NGOs were living comfortably. Considering the fact that NGOs will suffer from undue influence from donors and consist of an inflated overhead, it seems as though money is being inefficiently allocated without the beneficiaries in mind. Judge, for these reasons, we urge a strong con ballot in today's debate. Thank you. So now. We should all shake hands. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good job. 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 Good job.
Okay. Oh, 